Hi everybody! We are doing a very fun project today. We're actually planting our first fruit trees here on the homestead. It's the uh, start of an orchard. Uh, you know the old saying, best time to plant trees 40 years ago. Second best time is today, so today's the day. And we got a combo cherry tree as well as a combo apple tree. Yeah, and plans in the future to add a third tree as well. We haven't decided if that's gonna be plum or pear or another apple or cherry yet. Definitely. So we're going to take you guys along on the process um, and show you what we've learned from watching countless YouTube videos here about how to plant a fruit tree. Yep, lots of digging to be done. Yes, so we're gonna get started on that. We also have our supervisor um, being a deck dog, but being a cozy deck dog because it's pretty cold outside today. So we started off by digging up our honeysuckle that was here. You probably saw it in previous videos. Um, we wanted to space out our trees, so obviously they had enough distance, but also too, the plan is to add more in the future. So the kinds of trees that we got um, was this combo apple. So it's like grafted and it has various different kinds. Um, so we have some Spartan, we have um, Rayburn, we have Granny Smith on this side, a barking dog, Cortland, and then Red McIntosh. We're just doing our placement now for everything, making sure that they're in line with our beds. Um, but the second one we got was this combo cherry. So we have Stella cherries, we have Montmercerary, Mercenary, whatever you say for that one, Black Tartarian, and then bing. So we're marking everything out and we're gonna dig some holes that are twice as wide and twice as deep as these pots. So I think we have dug a big enough hole, um, but let's check the tree. So definitely wide enough and definitely deep enough. So we're going to put all of this dirt right back in the hole. So we got a couple things to aid in planting trees. This is some fertilizer uh, that actually works really well for clay soils. And as you can see, that's what we have here. We also got some natural cedar mulch for on top. We got some tie backs. We have a sledgehammer there, which we had before. And then these T posts that we had before and then some chicken wire so we can protect the bases of the tree. So to start off, we're gonna start backfilling. Typically you wouldn't want to put your compost in the hole with the tree, but as mentioned, we have pretty clayey soil. So we want to make sure that we are adding a little bit of material so it can start kind of um, biodegrading and then creating a good root system. So what we're going to do is we're going to backfill using the native soil, put a little bit of the compost in, mix them together and then check the height of our tree. So hole is at the right height now for backfill and compost. Um, before putting the tree in place, I'm gonna bang these T-posts into the ground though. I'm going to use these to help stabilize the tree. We have a very windy, uh, live in a very windy area. We're, I don't know, 500 meters from Lake Ontario at this point. So we get some crazy south to north winds here. Um, there's really no wind break from our yard till at least 10 houses down so we can get some rippers coming through here so these posts are going to help us keep our trees stabilized um, we don't want to over stabilize them because we do want them to develop strength against the wind but um, it's easier to put these things in now when the hole is freshly dug than once the ground is all compacted so i'm just going to bang these guys in and then uh, the tree's ready to go in the hole so All right, at this point, everything is ready for our brand new cherry tree to go in the hole. We're gonna get him uh, out of the pot in the ground and then we're gonna backfill with all of the native soil. It's really important that you use the native soil, soil that came out of the hole. 
um, because you want to encourage its roots to continue to go into that soil. If you were to backfill the hole with something like a uh, garden mix, topsoil, triple mix, the roots are going to want to stay in that. They're not going to want to move out of the backfill material into the, the native soil. So really important to replant into the soil you've removed from your hole. Just going to verify our height one last time. That's pretty good. Give the pot a bang. that fell apart. Very wet material in there. See this soil's standing on its own. I might have to kind of pick it up and backfill a little bit here. Really important is we want this point here where the roots are developing to be above our ground level here. So and pretty good there. Yeah, start to start back on the lower soil. So we have the tree all in the native soil is back up to the top of the hole and what we're going to do now is we're going to use the rest of the compost that we have and kind of layer it on top avoiding the main trunk of the tree. All right, at this point, the roots of the tree are pretty much taking care of the tree. It's in the ground, backfilled, compost for nutrition. Again, we didn't make, we didn't backfill the hole with compost or loose soils because we want to encourage the tree roots to grow into the native surrounding soil, which in this case is fairly heavy in clay. Um, fairly nutrient rich though, there's been a lot of decaying matter in this area for quite some time. Um, but the last step now for the root of the tree is covering it with um, it's really important with new trees that they don't um, dry out. Water is really, really critical in the early stages of getting the roots developed and established. Now we're lucky this ground is very damp. Um, and it's still early spring here, so there's quite a lot of groundwater, but it's really important, especially because this compost on the surface now is so dark, we don't want that evaporating. So we're going to have the backfill now and cover and protect the tree with some uh, some basic natural cedar mulch and again for us it's really important we're not using anything colorful or anything with any dye in it this is a natural cedar mulch and it makes it aesthetically pleasing and it's gonna look really good too there's something something to be said for a nice mound of mulch around a uh, around a tree This bag, so use the other half on our uh, on our apple tree, which gives us a whole bag to kind of maybe top up in a couple of days with and see how everything settles. So the last step we have is we just want to make sure they're a little bit more secure. So we purchased these from a local greenhouse and essentially all it is is a rubber hose that's located on some wire that you're able to thread through the T-posts and give them a little bit more stability. So we're going to put one on either side making sure that they still have room to move because as Han said we want to make sure that we do have a little bit of movement to create an nice strong trunk. How do you feel? Tired. <laughs> in a good way. Definitely in a good way. This is pretty cool. This is uh, outside of fruit there's a lot of benefits to, to growing trees. Um, we're in a low spot in the yard so we're hoping that having not just these two trees but more trees in the future is really going to help with uh, water absorption. Um, I mean planting trees in general is good for the environment. They're great carbon sequesterers aka they bring carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in themselves and in the soil which helps with global warming and all sorts of other environmental concerns. They're beautiful. There's nothing better than looking out of your window and seeing a tree. Um, cherry blossoms are some of the prettiest. Just about as pretty as my wife. Um, oh, so sweet. <laughs> um, 
and then yeah at the end of the day um maybe not this year hopefully next year for sure we'll be getting fruit and that means cherry pie filling cherry topping on ice cream uh apple pie all that good stuff oh man one apple pie in the summer i almost forgot though chicken wire obviously we spent a lot of time putting this in today we're gonna do our apple tree tomorrow because it's getting to be about supper time but we are going to take some of this chicken wire and just wrap up the base um, we do have quite a few squirrels chipmunks rabbits and um, in the summertime you want to make sure that you do have some coverage uh, you don't typically use the white bands that go directly on the trunk until they're dormant um, because they don't allow light to hit the tree and you want to make sure you do that so we're going to get this done probably off camera uh, so we can enjoy the last little bit of planting our orchard but thank you for coming along and we'll update you as soon as we have the apple tree in well the apple tree is now in its forever home we're looking really forward to having this started orchard. The apples on that side, and then we have the cherry over here. And it definitely has sparked the bug in my husband because he is currently now planting his potatoes.